Here's the resistive action of a known good valve. I'm using a heat gun. Heat up the nose of the valve until you see the open indication on the meter. You also note that the meter is well under an ohm. Doesn't even indicate a couple tenths of an ohm, so this switch is closed. I was starting to creep up in resistance, there it opened. Snap action. You see the meter is showing infinite. Here in a second, it'll close again. There it closed. Snap action. All right, now I've transferred my leads over to our suspect bad valve. And as you can see, we already have a couple tenths of an ohm. And it's kind of dancing around a little bit showing that this uh, switch is closed, but not as well as the other one. So same as the other valve, I'm going to heat it up with the gun and watch the meter's response. All right, temporarily we went into the mega ohms. Now when it cools, you can see it ramp back down in resistance. Back into the K ohms, about 300K. You can see that it's actually kind of toggling higher resistance and then lower and back to higher resistance. It's like there's an oscillation. And there it's trying to close. So you can see this is not snap action. This is more of a ramping of resistance. So here we have a known good valve. And I'm going to heat it. And you'll be able to observe the cycling of the switch. You pay attention, of course, to the scope trace, and you'll see the amp meter here fall to zero as the switch opens. Just activated. My time on the scope is set at one second. And they're deactivated. You can see nice, sharp rise and fall times on the scope. Now we have the uh, suspect bad valve. I'm gonna do the same test. As you can see, the coil is energized right now, pulling about an amp, and we'll heat it up. All right, you can see it activated, current fell off. This one cycles. You see a lot of noise, too, in the sine wave. To expand the time out. You can see a little bit of the ringing in the signal. So to determine whether it was a thermal switch itself, I opened up the back of the valve and exposed the circuit board, which you can see right here at the edge of it. And the contacts are sitting right there and there. So in a second here, I'll rerun the test and we'll have the scope and line I'll monitor right at these points and you'll see that the switch is the culprit. Alright, so it's cycling. So now I'm right across the switch itself. So this eliminates the possibility that it's a bad circuit board connection since I'm uh, right across the wiring coming off the switch. To eliminate the uh, internal coil as having anything to do with this, I've hooked up a load resistor and I've got the scope across that and so the coil is not connected at this point. We'll repeat the test and see how it looks. Once again, watch the uh, scope and the amp meter. We're pulling a little over an amp with this resistor that I've chosen. So here we go, heater up.
Okay, current's dropping out. As you can see, it's cycling just like it did with the uh, built-in solenoid. The cycling time seems to have increased quite a bit using the external resistor uh, that I'm pulling about an amp and a half on rather than a little under amp with the coil. So my guess is, is that we're generating some heat in the switch itself while it's uh, conducting the current.